I was saying earlier when we loosely touched on this story, um, I remember speaking to a, uh, a guy who ran a company that, that, that essentially installed security software for big corporations. Uh, he, was, he said, I'm staggered every day when I go into some of the big name corporations to discover they're still running Windows 95 and they've got pretty much no protection going on because it's seen as a, a bit of a luxury expense that we probably don't need. Now, I'm sure that's got better... Uh, but there are still many cracks in, in, in this story here. It's bad when it happens to a company, and that company could have intrinsic links with governments, of course. Uh, but when it happens to the, the country's databases and systems, uh, I mean, all hell could break loose here. This is a very serious place to be, and a, a, a warning from a man who knows his soil. Well, exactly. And I think one of the points um, that he made so well in his speech and that the um, National Cybersecurity of Centre have made in the report they published today is that a lot of the attacks that we are seeing, whether that's against the private sector or the public sector, are actually making use of exploits that have been known about for quite a long time um, and that could be patched um, and that a lot of companies aren't taking up the sort of advice, the guidance that they've put out there um, and updated for, for many years now. And I think that was his his mm. plea, really, to people to do that. Um, because you mentioned, of course, um, the difference between sort of government systems and, and private, but a lot of the critical national infrastructure that we rely on is, of course, actually technically Indeed. in private sector hands. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if you want the lights to stay on and everything like that, they've got to be well protected. And in terms of... The increase in this, uh, I mean, Richard Horn talked about incidents tripling. He specifically mentioned Russia and China, and perhaps there's no surprises there. Um, these are, one would assume there are incidents here, Ruth, that, that were scuppered or they were able to stop them in their tracks or certainly reduce the severity of them. But the fact that they are there and on the increase should concern us all. Yes, I mean, there's there's a couple of um, reasons why we're seeing such a big increase, and, and they were highlighted quite well um, by um, by Richard Horn today. Um, the first one is that it is now much easier to get hold of the sort of um, tool sets to launch these attacks online. You can yeah. go and buy attacks. You don't have to be really good at hacking or, or have really sophisticated knowledge of it anymore. You can just go and purchase one. So that obviously sure. makes the number of people who can launch these, um, you know, much wider. Um, the second driver, of course, is uh, the sort of geopolitical tensions we're seeing. We know that Russia um, has, we've seen a huge spike um, in Russian attacks against Europe's um, energy networks. Um, we've also seen an increase um, in uh, intrusions from uh, the Chinese, or rather from uh, organizations that are linked to the Chinese state. Um, into critical national infrastructure um, in the US and, and across sort of the Western world, really. So I, I think what we're, we're seeing is um, really international tensions playing out in the cyber domain. And in many ways, really, online has become the new front line, whether you're talking about tackling crime or whether you're talking about state conflicts. And is this about dominance? I mean, if, if a country, a rogue state, uh, were to... I gave the example earlier if somebody wiped the entire database of the NHS. I mean, the you know, one can only imagine the, the, the problems that that would cause. Uh, why would somebody want to do that? Would it be a case of just showing that they can? Um, it, it's probably not going to be a ransom issue as such, although that might, there might be a component in that in some attacks. But anything that were, were to happen on a, a grand scale like that, is this about nothing more than one state saying this is how powerful we are this is what we can do or would there be a another reason would it be a, in response to a perhaps a completely different battle sanctions or something that you might have on a state that's okay you put sanctions on us um we're going to do this it, what sort of area are we looking at here ruth no, I think really uh, any of those. It, it all depends on um, who's carrying it out. And like you say, the motives for different attackers are different. So, of course, a, a big source of online attacks is actually criminal because it's, you know, it's much easier to steal money off people online now than it is, yep. for example, to, to rob a bank. So that's, um, that's part of it. Uh, if you look at North Korea, for example, a lot of the um, intrusions and attacks they carry out are to um, either 
get finances to subvert some of the sanctions that are put on their economy, um, or it's to steal intelligence about to how to increase their sort of, you know, military or um, sort, of, sort of domestic security capabilities. Um, so th those are some some of the reasons. And the, the other one, of course, is, is that it is a very easy way now, if you were looking simply from the point of view of causing havoc, uh, you saw like, you know, Russia's attack on um, Ukraine's energy system um, just a couple of weeks ago. It It is now for, for nation states a, a way to cause absolute havoc in a country yeah. without you know, firing a missile or a shot. So that Russia does use it. So we've seen Russia use it for years now to enhance um, the impact um, of the kinetic warfare that it carries out on the ground. And other states do too. Sure. Um, while you're with us, Ruth, I'm about to ask you this question. Um, a story about artificial intelligence. More, than, Most people are willing to share health data to develop AI in the NHS. I mean, they don't want to lose the human touch, but they quite like the idea of uh, improving it. Uh, does that surprise you that uh, over 7,200 people were, were asked about this? 75% of the public said they support sharing personal data to help AI, uh, to help AI use in the NHS. Uh, it's, it's a surprise. It's a nice surprise, really. Um, it brings me great joy because I think there have been a numerous attempts to improve data, sh even just sharing data across um, the NHS, not just for um, for the purposes of AI. And that's always run in, into problems um, with public opinion. And I sure. think provided that there are sensible safeguards, that it's done well, the the you know the, the possibilities in terms of um, diagnoses and um, much faster diagnoses diagnoses and, and new treatments, I think, are absolutely brilliant. So I do think it's something that we should um, be pushing ahead with. Obviously, the flip side of that, we all see news stories this year about attacks, um, cyber attacks on the NHS. Lots of the time it's been ransomware and it's been brought absolute chaos to the ability of hospitals to carry out operations and things like that. But we must safeguard people's data. So anything like that has yeah. to be done with a huge security drive around it too. There it is, Ruth. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate that. Ruth Edwards, cybersecurity expert and, just for the record, a former Tory MP as well. Well, um, sharing data it depends what you're sharing, doesn't it? And would they need to know who you were? I guess you, you know, if you, um, if it's health related, they'd need to know like your age and your gender, uh, for example. That would make sense. Um, your ethnicity, I would imagine, would be a, potentially a factor. Uh, but would, would it matter if you didn't give your name and your details? I, I, most people haven't got a lot of health data, have they? I mean, we've, you know, we've all got a tiny bit, but most people haven't got loads. I mean, it might be your bunions or your achy back, or, you know, every now and again, you, you know, you're susceptible to getting sunburnt if you're in the wrong weather. Um, I, I don't know. I, I can imagine most of it is deeply uninteresting to a database. Uh, naturally, there are people who have more, far more complicated issues. Maybe that is of interest.